Story number five of Uncle Wiggily's Travels. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Emily Dahl. Uncle Wiggily's Travels by Howard Roger Garris. Let me see. I think I promised to tell you a story about Uncle Wiggily and the Skyrocket, didn't I? Or was it to be about a firecracker, seeing that it may soon be the 4th of July? What's that? A firecracker? No, a skyrocket. Oh, I'm all puzzled up about it, so I guess I'll make it a skycracker. A sort of half firecracker and half skyrocket, and that will do. Well, after Uncle Wiggily had gotten the little yellow bird that looked like gold out from the string trap in the tree, the old gentleman rabbit spent two nights visiting the second cousin of Grandfather Prickly Porcupine, who lived in the woods. Then, Uncle Wiggily got up one morning, dressed himself very carefully, combed out his whiskers, and said, well, I'm off to seek my fortune. It's too bad you can't seem to be able to find it, said the second cousin to Grandfather Prickly Porcupine. But perhaps you will have good luck today. Only you want to be very careful. Why? asked the old gentleman rabbit. Well, because you know it will soon be the 4th of July. Some boys may tie a firecracker or a skyrocket to your tail, said the porcupine. Ha ha, laughed Uncle Wiggily. They will have a hard time doing that for my tail is so short that the boys would burn their fingers if they tried to tie a firecracker to it. Then look out that they don't fasten a skyrocket to your long ears, said the second cousin to Grandfather Prickly Porcupine, as he wrapped up some lettuce and carrot sandwiches for Uncle Wiggily to take with him. The old gentleman rabbit said he would be careful, and away he went, going uphill and downhill with his barber pole crutch as easily as if he were being wheeled in a baby carriage. Well, I don't seem to find any fortune, he said to himself as he walked along. And just as he said that, he saw something sparkling in the grass beside the path in the woods. What's that? he cried. Perhaps it's a diamond. If it is, I can sell it and get rich. Then he happened to think what the second cousin of Grandfather Prickly Porcupine had told him about the 4th of July coming. And Uncle Wiggily said, Ha! Huh, I'd better be careful. Perhaps that sparkling thing is a spark on a firecracker. Aha! Uh -huh. So he looked more carefully and the bright object sparkled more and more. It didn't seem to be fire, but the old gentleman rabbit went up close, and what do you suppose it was? Why, it was a great big dewdrop right in the middle of a purple violet that was growing underneath a shady fern. Oh, how beautiful it was in the sunlight, and Uncle Wiggily was glad he'd looked at it. And pretty soon, as he was still looking, a big buzzing bumblebee stopped to take a sip of the dewdrop. Ha! This is a regular violet ice cream soda for me said the bee to Uncle Wiggily. And just as he was taking another drink, a big, ugly snake made a spring and tried to eat the bee. But Uncle Wiggily hit the snake with his crutch, and the snake crawled away, very much surprised. Thank you very much, said the bee to the rabbit. You saved my life, and if I ever can do you a favor, I will. And with that, he buzzed away. But pretty soon, not so very long, in a little while, Uncle Wiggily came to a place in the woods where there were a whole lot of packages done up in paper lying on the ground. And there was a tent near them, and it looked as if people lived in the white tent, only no one was there just then. I guess I better keep away, thought the old gentleman rabbit, or they may catch me. And just then, he saw something that looked like a long, straight stick standing up next to a tree. The ha! That will be a good stick to take along to chase the bears away with, he thought. I think no one wants it, so I'll take it. Well, he walked up and took a hold of it in his paws, but... Mind you, he didn't notice that on one end the stick was a piece of powdered string, like the string of a firecracker sticking down, and this string was burning. No, the poor old gentleman rabbit never noticed that at all. He started to take the stick away with him, when, all of a sudden, something dreadful happened. With a whiz and a rush and a roar, that stick shot straight into the air, carrying Uncle Wiggily with it, just like a balloon, for he hadn't time to let go of it. Up and up he went with a roar and a swoop. And just then, he saw a whole lot of boys rushing out of the woods towards the white tent. And one boy cried, Oh, fellows, look, a rabbit has hold of our skycracker, and it's on fire, and has gone off and taken him with it. Oh, the poor rabbit, because when the skycracker gets high enough in the air, the firecracker part of it will go off with a bang, and he'll be killed. Oh, how sorry I am. The hot sun must have set fire to the powder string. 
You see, those boys had come out in the woods to have their 4th of July where the noise wouldn't make anyone's headache. Well, Uncle Wiggily went on, up and up with the skycracker, and he felt very much afraid, for he'd heard what the boys said. Oh, this is the end of me, he cried as he held fast to the skycracker. I'll never live to find my fortune now. When this thing explodes, I'll be dashed to the ground and killed. The skycracker was whizzing and roaring, and black smoke was pouring out of one end, and Uncle Wiggily thought of all his friends, whom he feared he would never see again, when, all of a sudden, along came the flying bumblebee, high in the air. He was very much surprised to see Uncle Wiggily. Oh, can't you save me, cried the rabbit. Indeed I will, if I can, said the bee, because you were so kind to me. You are too heavy, or I would fly down to the earth with you myself, but I'll do the next best thing. I'll fly off and get Dickie and Nellie Chip Chip the Sparrow children, and they'll come with a big basket and catch you so you won't fall. No sooner said than done. Off flew the bee. Quickly, he found Dickie and Nellie and told them the danger Uncle Wiggily was in. Quick, called Dickie to Nellie. We must save him. Off they flew like the wind, carrying a grocery basket between them. Right under Uncle Wiggily they flew. And just as the skycracker was going to burst with a slam bang, the old gentleman rabbit let go, and into the basket he safely fell and the sparrow children flew to the earth with him. Then the skycracker burst all to pieces for the 4th of July, but Uncle Wiggily wasn't on it to be hurt, I'm glad to say. He spent the 4th visiting the Bumblebee's family, and had ice cream and cake and lemonade for supper, and at night he heard the band play and gave Dickie and Nellie 10 cents for ice cream sodas, and that's all to this story. But on the next page, if the baker man brings me a pound of soap bubbles with candy in the middle for Cora Janet's doll, I'll tell you about Uncle Wiggily and the Buttercup. End of Uncle Wiggily and the Skycracker. Recording by Emily Dahl.